The Parkland formula for burns is the topic, and the Parkland formula for burns is essentially used to calculate how much fluids the person will be given in the first 24 hours following a burn. And the formula is as follows. It's 4 mLs per kg times the weight in kg times the percentage of the total body surface area that's involved in the burn. So let's give an example. Let's say you have a man that's 100 kg and 50% of his body was involved in the burn. So essentially it would be 4 times 100 times 50 which is 20,000 mLs. That's how much fluid the patient needs to be given in the first 24 hours after the burn. Now this is broken up into two halves. The first half is given in the first eight hours and then the second half which would be 10,000 mLs is given in the following 16 hours. So if you're giving 10,000 mLs it would be 1250 mLs per hour that would be the rate and similarly if you're giving the second 10,000 mLs in the next 16 hours it would be given at a rate of 625 mLs per hour so that's essentially the Parkland formula now there's one other uh, modification called a modified Parkland formula and that's essentially the same thing it's just you add an additional 2 liters or 2,000 mLs uh, and this is done basically to cover maintenance fluid needs and that's just the only difference between the Parkland formula and the modified Parkland formula. Now, one important thing is that this formula is great, but you also need to look at the urine output of the patient to adjust um, the amount of fluids. Typically, after a burn, the patient will be in need of fluids, so you need to monitor the urine output. And in an adult, you want to shoot for about 30 to 50 uh, milliliters of urine per hour. If you really want to use a formula, you can use one milliliter per kg per hour. So for example, if you have a 70 kg man, he should have about 70 mLs per hour of urine. That would be great. But even 30 to 50 would be enough. But if it's less than this, that means he's not getting enough fluid so you would need to increase the fluid rate. You notice in the formula you had this TBSA, right? Total body surface area. Now how do you figure that out? If somebody comes in with a burn, do you measure the burn and then divide by his total body surface area? It would be qu quite difficult, especially in the acute setting. So fortunately there's something called a rule of nines. Rule of nines and that helps uh, figure out the total body surface area involved in the burn. So I'll just draw a very very quick diagram you know that illustrates the body parts and then I'll essentially tell you what each of these rules of nines are. For each arm that's involved it's nine percent so that's the the first part. If the head and neck are involved, that's another 9%. The trunk, the anterior trunk, is 18%, and the posterior trunk is another 18%. And then the legs are 18% each. So for example, let's say a patient comes in and he's burned his entire arm on this side. And you want to figure out the total body surface area. Well, it's easy. It's 9%. Now let's say somebody came in and their entire front part of their body is burned um, including their legs. So all the way down here. Well it would be 18 plus 18 plus 18 which is 54 percent. And then there's one final part and that's the genital area and the genital area is given a 1 percent. So when you total this all up it totals 100 percent. So that's the rule of nines. So let's take a look at some clinical vignettes and see what this looks like. A man who weighs 65 kg sustained second and third degree burns over both 
of his lower extremities when his pants catch on fire. When examined shortly after, it is ascertained that virtually all the skin from both groins to the tip of the toes, front and back, have been burned. According to the modified Parkland formula, which of the following is the approximate total amount of IV fluid that he can be expected to require during the first 24 hours post-burn? Okay, well, Parkland formula is 4 mLs per kg times the weight in kg times the total body surface area that's been involved in the burn. And the modified Parkland formula just adds an additional 2,000 mLs, and we'll do that after we calculate it. So we have 4, the kg is 65, and then they don't give you the percentage, but they tell you that both of his lower extremities are involved, and each lower extremity is 18%, so 2 would be 36. So that would give you a total of 9,360 for the regular uh, Parkland formula. Now when you have a modified and you're adding an additional 2,000, this brings you up to 11,360, and that is choice E. Next question. After suitable calculations have been made using the modified Parkland formula, a 70 kg man with extensive third degree burns is receiving Ringer's lactate at the calculated rate, which happens to be 750 mLs per hour. The infusion started 30 minutes of time within 30 minutes when the burn occurred. Over the next three hours, the urinary output is recorded as 15, 22, and 18. It is verified that the Foley catheter is open and draining freely. The urine is dark yellow, without blood, and has specific gravity of 1040 and sodium concentration of 10. The patient's blood pressure is 100 over 70, pulse is 98, and the CVP is 2. On basis of these findings, which of the following is the most appropriate next step? Okay, well, let's go through these. Diuretics should be given. Well, this means that he has received too much fluid. So... If this was correct, that would mean that he needs less fluid. Okay, let's look at the next one. Fluid administration should continue at the present rate. So this means that everything is okay. The rate of fluid administration should be decreased. So that means he needs less fluid. Because if, if the correct answer is C, the rate of fluid administration should be decreased, that means he's currently getting too much. So he needs less. Rate of fluid administration should be increased. That means he needs more. He needs more fluids. And then finally, uh, treatment is needed for renal failure. Well, there's nothing to indicate in the question that he's in renal failure just quite yet because he is producing urine. Now let's look at the urine output. That's going to give us the answer. Normally, uh, an adult should produce about 30 to 50, yeah, 30 to 50 mLs of urine an hour. And if you really want to use a formula, you can use 1 mL per kg per hour. So that would give you, with a weight of 70, about 70 milliliters per hour. Now he's producing way less each hour after the burn. So he is not getting enough fluid. So he needs more fluid. So based on that, the answer is D. And then finally, the 68-year-old woman is brought to the emergency department after being rescued from her burning apartment building. She was found unconscious in her bedroom, which was full of smokes and flames. Uh, on presentation, she has extensive second and third degree burns over her legs, torso, and an estimated TBSA of 25. The patient is stable with blood pressure of 160 over 70, pulse is 100, body temperature is 96. The plan is to initiate fluid replacement. Most appropriate management is 2. Okay, well, basically they're just asking you what's the Parkland formula, and we know it's not A or B because it's 4 milliliters per kg. So that brings us down to choice C, D, and E. We know that uh, we have the correct uh, formula here, so that's fine. So I guess the next part of the question will give us, do you give it over 8 hours, do you give it over 24 hours, or do you give one half in the first 8 hours? Well, we know that the answer is E. You give the first half in the first 8 hours, and you give the second half in the next 16 hours. Just before I close, I wanted to point out the difference between colloid and lactate ringers. Colloid 
for those of you who don't know, colloid solutions, uh, examples of those are red blood cells given to patients or fresh frozen plasma or albumin solutions. And then the other type is known as crystalloid. And crystalloid solutions include the saline that you commonly see given to patients and the ones that are involved a lot in burns which are lactated ringers solutions. So that's the difference between colloid and crystalloid solutions.